Hey folks, we talked about how to get started as the free peoples in War of the Rings, now let's learn how to play as the Shadow. It may seem like the easier role, but there are still some nuances to keep in mind. So here are my top 5 tips for your first game as the Shadow player. At the beginning of the game, you have a clear advantage in how big your army is. Instead of trying to make it bigger, get aggressive with it right off the bat. Given enough time, the free peoples can build a defensive force powerful enough to challenge you, so don't let them. Early moves should be focused on consolidating your forces and then moving in to attack. And then in a more overarching sense, you need to keep the pressure on the free peoples through military action. This is the theater that you have more control over, so force them to fight you on your terms. Whenever possible, try to completely eliminate one nation before moving on to the next. If you attack on multiple fronts, you'll drive too many nations into war, which allows the free peoples to mount a much more effective defense. And if you leave any settlements open, then that gives the enemy the opportunity to build up and try and take back those uh, points that you worked so hard for. What you can often do is drive a strong army into a, uh, into a siege, and then kind of just sit on that for a little while as you move to the surrounding areas and mop up the settlements and cities that are nearby. Then, once you're ready to take that stronghold, don't be afraid to downgrade elites to keep the siege going. Yes, it's like taking a hit, but your army is mass-produced, and being efficient with your actions is much more important than saving an orc. One of the biggest advantages the Shadow Player has is how many dice you have to work with. You can and should get Saruman on the board in the first or second turn. Getting the Witch King out early seems scary because it activates all the other nations, but honestly, they're still going to have to spend a lot of time and actions to make use of that, uh, provided you're following my last tip. And the mouth, well, they're not going to get out until late game, but once they do, you're going to be that much more powerful. And now all of these leaders, they do have very useful abilities, but even if they didn't, it would still be worth it just for the dice. The more actions you have, the better equipped you are to overwhelm your enemy. It's not always a simple task to corrupt the ring bearers, especially because it depends on the free people's player actually moving the fellowship, but you should make sure it isn't too easy for them. Now, yeah, you're probably going to roll an eye or two every round, but if you don't allocate an eye to the hunt box before rolling, you run the risk of rolling no eyes and them rolling all swords, which does not feel good. Uh, on top of that, military action is a great, if indirect, way to put pressure on the fellowship. Uh, whenever you move a Nazgul, putting one into the ring bearer space, if you can, is an easy way to improve your odds during the hunt. Uh, moving soldiers into their space is a bit harder, but if you can manage it without derailing your war effort, do that too. There are also some great event cards to play when the timing is right, but all of this is dependent on the Free People's player actually going for a ring victory. If halfway through the game you feel like they're just not, don't feel bad about ignoring all of that and just focusing on the war. This is piggybacking on tip number two a little bit, but when planning your conquest, keep in mind that every city and stronghold on the board is a viable option. Yes, even the Grey Havens. I'm sure Gondor has more points, but it can also be harder to take sometimes. If you notice that your opponent is spending a lot of time and effort building up their defenses in one specific region, consider just going somewhere else. Also, strongholds are a good thing to take early in the game before the free peoples can mount a proper defense. And then cities are a great way to get the last couple points you need because they're a lot harder for your opponent to hold. Just remember that you're going to have to hold on to them too. So those are my top five beginner strategy tips for playing as the Shadow in War of the Ring. Again, big thanks to Nick for helping me put this list together. If you've got some great ideas for first timers or if you've got some galaxy brain strats that a normie like me could never even conceive of, please leave them in the comments below. And just a reminder, uh, my Patreon backers got to see this and the Free People's Strategy video a month before anybody else. So if you want uh, early access to stuff like this, if you want behind the scenes content, if you want to vote on which games I teach, please on, uh, head to the Patreon and consider pledging a few bucks. Either way though, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.